Hello friends, welcome to OHAVA's weekly update on money and economy. We begin with an important domestic event, the presentation of the interim union budget on 1st February by the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. The final budget will be presented in July after the general elections are over. Markets were looking at the fiscal deficit and borrowing numbers and the budget has ensured that fiscal consolidation path is continued. The revised fiscal deficit is estimated at 5.8% of GDP for FY 2023-24 with a goal to reduce it below 4.5% by 25-26. For FY 25, the fiscal deficit goal is set at 5.1% and gross borrowing at Rs 14.13 lakh crores, which is lower than last year's Rs 15.43 lakh crores. The net borrowing after taking into account redemptions and maturities would be Rs 11.75 lakh crores through dated government securities. To maintain the growth momentum, the interim budget has focused on capex at 3.4% of GDP for FI25. The Finance Minister also announced green energy initiatives which will be taken for India to meet its net zero commitments by 2070, which included expansion of e-vehicle ecosystem, new scheme for biomanufacturing and biofoundry, promotion of climate resilient activities for blue economy, and enabling 1 crore households to obtain 300 free units of electricity through rooftop solarization. No tax changes were announced. Rural and urban affordable housing, schemes for farmers and women's self-help groups, boosting rail infrastructure and provision of interest-free financing for research and innovation were other highlights. In summary, the budget sets the foundation for the vision of a big ship Bharat, developed India by 2047, focusing on demographic, democratic and diversity strengths. Commitment to national development with new inspirations and resolutions termed as Kartavya Kaal, era of duty. Moving on to impact of budget announcements on the debt market, the lower fiscal deficit and gross borrowing numbers has been taken positively by market participants and yield on the 10-year benchmark government security fell from 7.15 levels pre-budget to nearly 7% levels a day after budget announcement. The lower supply of government bonds coupled with stable demand from market participants like banks, provident funds and insurance companies and expected high demand from foreign portfolio investors due to inclusion in the JP Morgan index is the reason several market participants are bullish on government bond yields. It is likely that RBI may sell government bonds from its portfolio in order to suck out liquidity as foreign inflows hit in a big way, and this may cause intermittent volatility. However, RBI has limited government bonds to sell. Thus, demand-supply ratio is expected to remain skewed. Moving on, in a concerning development, RBI has ordered Paytm Payments Bank and associate of 197 Communications to stop accepting fresh deposits in its accounts or popular wallets from March in a major blow to one of the country's largest payment firms. The RBI had in 2022 asked the bank to stop adding customers. A subsequent audit revealed persistent non-compliances and continued material supervisory concerns in the bank, RBI said. The regulator used a legal provision that allows it to act in the interest of depositors and did not specify a timeline for reviewing the restrictions imposed on the bank. As per analysts, for all practical purposes, the above notifications end the operations of Paytm Payments Bank. However, customers will be able to withdraw or utilize their balances held with the bank, the RBI said. Paytm on its part has said they will comply with RBI directions, replace their banking partner and expects that a worst case impact of 300 crore to 500 crore may happen to its annual EBITDA. Post the news, the stock has plunged 20% and it is possible there may be a license cancellation too for the bank. And finally, moving on to news on the global economy, 
The IMF, that is the International Monetary Fund, has recently raised its global economy growth forecast to 3.1% for 2024 and said it expected unchanged growth of 3.2% in 2025. The historical average for the 2000-2019 to period was 3.8%. Global trade was expected to expand by 3.3% in 2024 and 3.6% in 2025, well below the historical average of 4.9%, with gains weighed down by fresh trade restrictions. On inflation front, the agency predicts that advanced economies should see average inflation of 2.6%, down four-tenths of a percentage point from the October forecast, with inflation set to reach central bank targets of 2% in 2025. By contrast, inflation would average 8.1% in emerging market and developing economies in 2024 before easing to 6% in 2025. New commodity price hikes from geopolitical shocks, including continued attacks on shipping in the Red Sea, could prolong tight monetary conditions and a soft landing would not be easy. The US Federal Reserve, European Central Bank and Bank of England were expected to start lowering interest rates gradually in the second half of 2024. The IMF's chief economist said that the global outlook reflected more balanced upside and downside risk with the risk of a wider conflict in the Middle East offset by the prospect that lower fuel prices could help inflation fall faster than expected. That's it for this week from us. Do visit our website www.oava.in for information on our courses. See you next week.